We're in the XR enablement, which is an awesome um, series of talks that are about to happen today. Uh, everything from just futuristic tech to uh, scaling, which is super, uh, super important. So awesome space. Excited for y'all to be here. Um, just a few reminders. There's the AWE Live app in case you want to learn about what other stuff is going on. But of course, everything's recorded so you can watch it. In terms of, let me just get my, I've got to thank the sponsors. That's a really important one. Uh, sponsors are Arbor XR, Care AR, HP, Metamaterials, Plug XR, Niantic is a titanium sponsor, Qualcomm, and Unity Technologies. So thanks to them. Um, I do kind of recognize some of you from the um, party last night. So unfortunately, there'll be no whispering. I can't talk any quieter than I am right now. But um, there's some coffee that's going to be free from 10. So y you'll be fine. So we'll, we'll, get, we'll get that rolling for you guys. So don't worry. Um, and of course, there's going to be the expo, which closes at 3. So be sure to go in there and check out all the really cool. I'm just going to take this off for now. Just stay six feet away. Um, all the cool tech that's happening um, in the expo space. So everything from haptics, which is my happy space. Um, I'm from a company called Titan Haptics. You probably know me as Chick Tech um, when the mask is off. And there's just so much really cool stuff that you need to try that you won't have access to anywhere else. So be sure to check out all the things going on there. But without further ado, super excited. Um, our first talk of the day is updates on the lightest, brightest, most versatile waveguide on the market. This is going to be a really good one. Um, really excited to bring up the CEO of Displex, uh, Antti um, you know, background in chemistry, which is super exciting. I definitely want to pick your brain on that, on that space. But inventor, forward thinker, um, has led his team to $50 million in funding. Um, just an all-around um, epic background that I uh, can't wait to dive into further. So please, bring yourself up here. Do I have a clicker? to change the slides. Now I do have. Hey, great to be here. Um, super excited about the show. First one on the long time on the stage. And, uh, and I want to chat you a little bit about the disabilities and what we have been doing in the COVID time. this goes. I cannot change the slide. There it is. Sorry, could someone help on getting the slides? I'm, I'm not getting the slides working, so... Yeah, in the beginning of COVID, you missed travel, you know, being, being all around in the world. And later on, in the, when the COVID was ending, it was like, ah, I, start, I need to travel. What, what I need to pack or what I need to get with me. Yeah. But great to be here. I actually left USA on the last day. It was still borders open. And, and I just noticed that I was back here in the day, same day that the borders was reopened. So really miss you guys. OK, they re, they re, re slide. No, I cannot dance and I cannot sing. And I cannot eat chicken fingers. Anything else I will do. <laughs> oh, this is my slide, yeah. OK, so let's see. It works, yes. So what we do, we are of course the world leader in, in augmented reality, eyewear, especially in a wave guides. Uh, we are working on sales, sales model, supply model. The company was founded 
actually 2015. Our background is a research institute in Finland called VTT. Uh, well, we have then expand. We have an office here in San Francisco. We just opened an office in, the, in a Shenzhen in China, uh, but the main, main office is in Finland, uh, Espo. We are currently 85 employees, so we grow, we double maybe our employees during the COVID time, so it wasn't that bad for us. And, and we have raised uh, 50 million euros totally. Uh, last one was 33 million US dollars in uh, Monday, we announced it. So, what is in our tech, uh, what we do and what we use? So, uh, we use really high refractive index uh, wafers. And uh, on top of the wafers, uh, we create nanostructures. So, it's a surface relief grading, but what is our technology? Uh, the big, big part of the company is also the software, how we design these waveguides, and, and it relies on the supercomputing. Uh, our technology is ready with the lasers and uh, LED light sources. Uh, we, are, we are getting on the, on the holograms or, or let's say 3D features, but that's later. So more than 40 patents and patent families ongoing. And I don't know the last count of the PhDs, but it's way over the 40. So it, it takes really bright minds to work on the waveguides. So, uh, we have a lot of patents, as I know, mentioned already, but on the, on the software, I want to point out that it's, it's really fast and it's really complex software to design these waveguides. So, just an example, if we go and uh, design a waveguide using just a laptop, it will take around 8 million years to design a waveguide, to calculate everything. So, it's, it's really computing heavy. So, that's why we have been investing and developing our software for the, from 2014. Actually, it's seven years already, almost eight years. Uh, then many, many of the softwares in this area, or how people do it, they, they rely on ray tracing. And, and ray tracing is really nice. It works well on a linear, wave, linear gradings. But when you go to 2D gradings, it just explodes. It's, it's too, too slow. So we invented a new way. And we checked it's uh, 20,000 times faster than any ray tracing based simulation software. In manufacturing, so after, after we make the design, we have an in-house proof of concept. So we can build these prototypes in-house. Uh, we have a line, manufacturing line for small quantities, some thousands. And, and then we have a partners for mass manufacturing. And here I have a one picture from uh, Applied Materials uh, that they manufactured our waveguides, our, our designs. We all know that this is, this is where we are going on, a, on a wearables. Um, there needs to be battery image processing, projectors, and all of those things. And it, those are really important also. Uh, and we have a lot of partners on all of that areas. Uh, but where this Felix is focusing is the lens, it's the see-through display, it's, it's the element that combines the image, the user's field of view. And one good marketing slides. So, of course, we have a really good design of our waveguide, really good image quality, and, and highly manufacturability. And why the highly manufacturability? Well, we use the processes the same as a semiconductor, so the lines are there. It doesn't need any extra extra tooling on that end. And, and being in a single layer is, is really important on the cost factor, because otherwise you double, triple, triple the manufacturing cost of your waveguides. And of course, the projectors I already mentioned. So we have a couple of products that I want to go through. First one is Ohut, which is a slim in Finnish language. And, and the second one is Selva, which means you are not drunk. No, no, it means it's, it's clear, uh, clear, and uh, it works on the, both of these works on uh, LED-based image sources. So this is the Ohut, you have seen this in our boot, and, um, and we did that a couple of years ago, launched this one, uh, building the manufacturing and everything, a couple of iterations. We went through and 
get the feedback from the market at that. Okay, you have a really good image quality, uh, but it actually it's not fitting in the like a good looking glasses. You have a offset on the projector is the wrong location. Uh, the waveguide is too wide for the glasses, and 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 then we said, hey guys, now we now we need to do something. Product guys, to, we 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 need to come up what to do, and and we need to be focusing on what everyone would like to wear. And, and this, is, uh, this was about the point that we started like looking looking the smart glasses of today or more or less audio or video glasses or taking a picture, picture glasses. And, and we can see Amazon, uh, Bose, uh, Ray-Ban. It's, it's really good looking glasses. And, and uh, I would actually pay one of, buy one of those if there was a display, but these all miss the display. And why they miss the display? Well, we think one of the reasons is the waveguide. It's, it's a really tough to get there. So if we look at normal glasses, there is something that's usually missing in the waveguides. Those are the tilts. So you always have a pantoscopic tilt, and you always have a face wrap on those normal glasses. So that's something that needs to be also uh, available from a waveguide perspective. There, there needs to be power, so how to correct the user's eye. And, and our point here is that uh, when we have a waveguide beaming the image to the user's field of view, uh, we could have a corrective lens on this side or that side of the waveguide. But when we put it the corrective lens on, on between the waveguide and eye, then we automatically uh, correct the eyesight for the virtual image and the real world. If you do it other way around, you never correct the virtual image for the user. And for the time being, before we have a curved waveguides, um, the curvature is it's achieved by putting a cover lens or protective lens, which is needed anyway for eye safety, and, and that can deliver the curved feature of the, babe, of the product. A weight like uh, if we take a normal glasses, they are li really lightweight. And everyone who wears glasses, uh, they know that they don't want to wear anything heavy on their head. It starts to put the pressure on your nose and it's really uncomfortable. So that sets uh, uh, really tight specs for the waveguide. We don't want to adapt the weight on the device. And that's why our waveguides are getting more and more uh, lightweight. So we are hitting on the three grams per eye. So it's not anymore the, the biggest, biggest weight addition in the device. And then it's uh, about how it should look like. And this is the actual heat map of 50 most sell, sold uh, glasses in the world. And, and, and we can see the, the actual trend on that one. So where it should be like. Uh, this is the frame. You should have a projector there in that area. Uh, and this is the shape of the 50 most sold classes. And now, if you want to make a good waveguide fitting on those, you want to have the projector in that arm location. But you also want to accommodate those all 50 classes. So that's why we made a flexible cut shape on those. And, and we changed the location of the projector quite a lot. And, and that, that actually achieved form factor of this looking glasses. So, hey guys, it's not bad anymore. I could wear this. Um, this, is, this is the form factor we can get with our waveguides. And, and then we have here, here we have the projector from one of our partners, uh, Avekant. So going, going through uh, the IC location chains, uh, tailored lens cut, uh, it's all day wearable. We have the frame wrap, pantoscopic tilt. It's, uh, it goes now with the micro LED projector, so we expand the, the functional uh, wavelength bands for the, for the waveguide. And at the same time, we made it even better, better on the color uniformity. Uh, brightness and all of all of the other features. 
So going going we are in a in a this this uh, the old one we are in a sampling phase and, and we can do piloting on those one and we are doing on the on the new one we start sampling uh, first quarter so you have to wait for uh, four months on that one and and then uh, pilot at the end of the 22 and uh, and volumes we should be hitting on the second half of the 23 with our manufacturing partners. Then we have uh, one other line of waveguide. So uh, for the laser, laser functional, it's SADE. In, in Finnish language, it means uh, light ray in, in uh, English. Uh, here we are uh, collaborating uh, uh, like ST Micro and Osram and, uh, and with all the partners in the laser alliance to build the market and, uh, and to release a good looking products. The goal is the same, so that the device need to look really good. And, and, uh, and uh, the solution here is that the LBS projector is really small. So, but to get the waveguide working for that kind of light source is not, not a simple task. We also have other partners like an uh, OQMEN that was released this week on, on uh, to work with these these kind of waveguides and the projectors with us. And oh my God, we have worked already two years on this waveguide development. Um, it's it's not easy. So we have made multiple iterations on these waveguides, and and uh, if we check w what we have done, uh, there is uh, images of blue channel, blue color channel on that one. And, and, uh, and we can see where we started. We didn't have the full field of view. We had a lot of uh, uh, Newton rings. Uh, then we corrected the Newton rings, but we lost even more field of view. Okay, let's go back to the drawing board. Uh, then we introduced uh, a new things. Uh, once again, we destroyed the image quality. Oh, damn, what is going to happen? But then we, then we got back in the track, like, hey, now we have the field of view there little bit lines, but we still have the Newton rings. Um, so the next next real a big one for us uh, on these releases is the uh, February time next year to have the next uh, iteration on these waveguides. And, and what we learn here and what we discuss with our partners and everything that is in, in the case of laser light source, it's, it's really, uh, really uh, important that there is a good fit between the projector and the waveguide. In the LED space, it's not that important. You get it close, it works. It looks nice. Um, no one can see the difference between the projectors easily, uh, if the basics of the projector is, is good. But here, it is really on the beam quality, beam shape, beam size, everything, how, how it's scanned in the in-coupling and those. And uh, I'm, we, we are really lucky to work with uh, our partners, SD, Ocument and others uh, to work towards to get this working and get this into consumers. Uh, some targets on that. We are hitting on a 25 degrees field of view. Uh, most likely monocular solution, but of course it could be uh, uh, for both eyes. And, uh, and the MTF is something that um, we are really focused on to get it in the same level as with the LADs and, and even developing a new measurement setups and everything to be there. Then uh, we do also a lot of custom development on our waveguides. So um, we have our own line of products, but then we do a custom development. Of course, that's uh, customer specific. We cannot go into details on those, but just to give you an example, what we have achieved on, on WaveGuide and where WaveGuide technology can go. So we have gone above 90 degrees field of view on a, on a WaveGuides. It's not anymore single layer, sorry guys. It's three layers per eye. But that, that tells us that there is not actually a field of view limit when it comes to WaveGuides. We have the roadmap there. We have it how, how we can get there. It's not ready yet, but it will be ready. 
efficiency is a big big thing on the on the wave guides we lose a lot of light uh, what we have done is we have hit 800 nits per lumen for 30 degrees field of view so that's already a nice number uh, we have gone below 90 uh, we have gone to less than uh, one percent a light leakage towards the world only single color still working on to get that working in the full color uh, field of 50 degrees field of view with a good efficiency uh, of course rainbow free you know that these nanostructures cause a little bit rainbow to the user field of view but we can cancel that out and then we did a uh, thousand nits per lumen for single color so that's already a really efficient waveguide some uh, key development areas we have still and, and what we are working on to, to, to solve so uh, one is of course the visual appearance so how visible the gradings are for other people's user user doesn't see it he sees maybe the rainbow from those but he cannot see those it's so close to eye but we all know the social acceptance and everything we don't want to look like a cy cyborg so that needs to be like a plain glass that you cannot see any gratings uh, we have a really good solution on that one already uh, hopefully we, we get time to implement that on the, our next product and it will be there hopefully uh, one, one thing of course is the privacy um, so that only the user sees the image not anyone else and it's it's not easy to get that one for nano gratings because well it means the diffraction happens in the both direction but uh, as said we are on a 99 percent towards only only the user it's still a one color but uh, we, we get it there with the RGB uh, I, I have spoke a lot about the form factor and uh, it's still still a challenge when we increase the field of view how we can keep the footprint really small of the waveguide because angles they they get bigger the light spreads easier bigger how we can keep the form factor same and the footprint even we increase the field of view uh, one one thing is that um, could we actually direct integrate these in the prescription lenses but on the injection molding or something that would be really nice um, nice at the end product and uh, and curved waveguides it's it's something that there is an already ideas but it will need the development on the whole supply chain to change from a flat wafers into the curved surfaces so it, it will take time and uh, of course the waveguide efficiency is, is a big one so uh, when we go to really really small projectors they start to lack on the efficiency uh, and, and we need to compensate that on the waveguide end how efficient we can get the waveguide okay that, that's my last one thank you um, huge round of applause that's so cool thank you for building the future of smart glasses that we're all dreaming of if everyone could just look under their chair um, just kidding, I'm not Oprah, you're not, the glasses aren't there. <laughs> as much as we want them to be. You're um, in, the, in the hall, right? Yes, or? we are in booth number 409. Ah, oh, beautiful, okay, perfect. Okay. So if you want to check it out, obviously go there. Anyone have any um, questions? We've got a few minutes, questions? I know there's gotta be some. If not, I will steal the time. Just thinking about the future um, of where this is going, 10 years from now give us a hint of your vision for that yeah so um i would see in a, in a 10 years uh i would see the first devices will come with the tethered from the phone hopefully we get already on the devices that are not tethered from the phone uh on the on the waveguide end uh, the field of view will increase so that the image get larger and larger uh, there is a lot of development in the projectors. So, is it the micro LED, is it Elcos, laser? Uh, some, I think there will be a market for all of those, but they, they will get really tiny and tiny, even smaller and smaller. Um, and, uh, and I'm really anxious to wait on the applications that everyone can build on this so that we can see and, and, and it really helps in our everyday life.
That's awesome. Super excited. You've got definitely me amped. Um, yep, question over here. Otherwise, I'm going to take them all. I'm going to use all okay. your time, so let's do it. Can you talk a little bit about the scale of, of manufacturability of these waveguides and, and how you envision ramping up as demand increases? Mm. It's a good. So, so um, as I, I mentioned a little bit, we use the same processes as in a semiconductor field. Uh, but the big difference here is that uh, we get maybe 16 to 20 waveguides from one wafer. And, and usually in a semiconductor, you get like a, maybe 1,000 chips or something from the same footprint. So that's a, that's a like big difference in, in, a, in a waveguides and, and semiconductor. And, and, and we still need to hit on the price target of the consumer unit, consumer uh, devices. Uh, then when we check the processes, like on, on a semiconductor, you have like a, you could have like a hundred process step, you know, uh, etching, inducing uh, elements and, and so forth. Uh, on our end, it's like a less than eight steps uh, on the process. So on, on one hand, we get less from a one wave guide. But on the other hand, we have a, a really fast process uh, on that end. So I think, it, I think it's really possible and it will be in a consumer product price. But it needs volumes to, to drive the cost and, and the price in that level. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Let's get another round of applause. Um, thank you so, so much. <laughs>